Hello everyone, <clears throat> and welcome back to my next Path of Titans video. Well, I have a bit of uh, an exciting video to make here because my co is now adult, so I'm pretty happy about that. And I thought I'd do a little uh, co tips video like I have done with my uh, other, other adult dinosaurs. Uh, but yeah, I'm really happy to have uh, got to adult now. Uh, it was a bit of a grind at first, but once you get to uh, sub-adult, <clears throat> I find that this dinosaur is so much better. Once you get your abilities, you become a lot more mobile. Uh, you become a, a little bit better on the land, and you're able to, when you have a longer neck, <laughs> you're able to reach further, uh, which is a bit of a bonus, which I'll explain, uh, I'll explain that shortly. Uh, but it's a pretty cool-looking dinosaur. Now, I'm going to... Uh, Come under here and let's have a look at the adult Kaiwekia. Now I was pretty happy with the way the uh, design of my dinosaur came up. I don't think I'm going to buy a skin for it or anything. I'm really happy with the way yeah, it turned out. Uh, it's pretty cool when you have a play at creating this dinosaur. Uh, some a pretty good look to it. Now I don't really have anything at the moment to show you comparable size. Uh, it is quite a large dinosaur when you're an adult, um, but you don't really realise how large it is when you're in the ocean because, uh, yeah, you very rarely see any other dinos. Uh, last time I was on, I did see another Kowekia out here in this kelp forest area. did a quick little bit of uh, questing with them. Uh, I also have bumped into a couple of Sarkos now who have uh, tried to attack me unsuccessfully. <laughs> in fact, this dinosaur doesn't even have a... I believe it doesn't even have a single scar on it. Um, but yeah, it, it becomes a real joy to uh, swim around. I'm going to show you the uh, how fast this dinosaur can be. So this is your normal speed. I'm just going to show you here. So as you can see, it's not super fast. Uh, that's a faster swim. And of course you also have the uh, speed sort of dash, which is this one here, which gives you a good bit of pro uh, propulsion. <laughs> and then I will show you also uh, the joy of doing that uh, up here and doing a huge leap out of the water, which is, uh, yeah, a lot of fun and very entertaining for any other dinosaurs in the area. Um, it's quite good on the surface as well. I'll show you. It's it's reasonably fast. Uh, it's it is the fastest swimmer, as you can see when you sort of sprint swim on the surface. It's it's quite fast, and the stamina drain isn't too bad in the water. Uh, you can travel quite far like this, uh, and you can also uh, do the swim backwards trick, where you gain your stamina. Turning backwards. Uh, now, the main reason why I got onto the Kaiwekia now is that uh, I wanted to get to adult stage before uh, there ended up being too many sort of ocean going creatures <laughs> for competition and uh, fighting uh, particular people that uh, KOS. Uh, so yeah, I thought it'd be a good opportunity to get to learn the map and um, get a bit of a heads up about the oceans before I start doing the next uh, dinosaur, which I believe is coming in, which is the sort of uh, dolphin-like dinosaur, uh, which I think is going to be great fun. And I'm really looking forward to getting on that dinosaur and growing it. I think that's going to be uh, really a, a, a great way to explore the oceans. I have gone completely around the map with this dinosaur and uh, discovered all the places, but I really love uh, coming down here to the southern end of the map, and I'm going to uh, show you why in a moment. Now, uh, Kelp Forest, I don't enjoy too much uh, questing here, just because it's uh, quite a large area, and a lot of the items that you... Uh, questing for uh, are quite hard to see uh, so it's always I find it's always better to try and quest in smaller areas 
uh, where possible of course. So we're just going to make our way up to the coast here. Now I'm just going to uh, get out of the chat window there. Now I'm just going to show you here how quickly your stamina regenerates. Now as you can see it's pretty reasonably quick when I'm just sitting there. Uh, now you can also sleep. I'm going to see if I can do that. Now one thing I do find is quite often uh, it can be a bit tricky to sleep. Uh, this time I actually did it quite well. So that's resting and of course that's sleeping. Now when you sleep it basically goes up straight away. You have to get down. You can only sleep and rest on the uh, bottom of the ocean. So that's one one thing to remember. Uh, now oxygen uh, is pretty good with this dinosaur. You've got a lot of oxygen and the great thing is when you come up to the surface it instantly regenerates. Um, unlike the Sarko for example who you have to sit on the surface for quite some time to gather back your oxygen. Well the uh, Kawekia does it instantly so that's really good. In fact you can just come up and jump out of the water and come back in and you're, you're, you're full of oxygen again. So we're just going to travel along the coast here for a moment <clears throat> and I'm just going to talk about the Kowak here a little bit and my experiences and then I'm going to take you through uh, the abilities that I'm using and how much they change this dinosaur and they, they really do affect this dinosaur massively. So one thing I like to do is uh, come along the coast here and just check out if there's any other dinosaurs uh, and sometimes if there are any I sort of I come down here and I I do some jumps and uh, I like to entertain <laughs> the other dinosaurs and I usually sit there and watch for quite some time. So of course we're at Young Grove right now. Um, now early on I found there were no other creatures in the ocean uh, but recently uh, a lot of sarcos including myself I just went onto the beach there uh, a lot of sarcos, including myself, have, have been had to go into the ocean. Uh, the rivers route now are a really overpopulated place and very dangerous. Uh, now, I would say the same for the Kowekia, although you do have speed to escape. Um, you really have to watch out for all the aquatic, uh, well, what can I say, aquatic going dinosaurs, uh, spinos uh, in particular. Uh, of course, Sarkos are going to have a crack at you. Um, but I do find that the rivers now are just full of megs and they really ruin it uh, for all the water going creatures. So you'll now find that uh, a lot of Sarkos out here in the ocean, it's actually, it makes a lot of sense. Um, a, you don't have to go on land. You can collect, uh, you know, like we've got here, turtle shells. You can collect. Uh, shellfish, sea anemones, starfish. Whereas if you're if you're at like Isako, for example, and you're in the river, or as a Kowakia, I guess, you know it's quite difficult and dangerous to collect things like mushrooms, etc. When you have to go onto the land, where other dinosaurs are going to easily uh, kill you. So the only thing I'll say as a Kowakia, the only danger really at the moment are sarcos that are in the ocean. Um, so just keep an eye out when you are under the water because obviously you can't really hear other dinos under the water and they will sneak up on you. Um, I've found though that every time they do, they're trying to do their uh, power power uh, bite. Uh, I can't actually remember the name of it now, but it might be crushing bite. So you can usually hear them building it up and you can just, uh, as soon as you hear that noise, you can just do this and, and get away and they've got that chance at, at catching you. It's a really nice nice time of the day out here on the ocean. Um, now things like the quest that just came up like deliver five clams I wouldn't even bother doing something like that um, I'd just go to a different area. Uh, your bread and butter uh, quests are going to be collecting starfish, uh, collecting lake sponge and collecting anemones. You can get those really at any of the locations. I, I particularly love uh, Azure Reef. 
and uh, we're going to head over there shortly. But I just want to show you the point up here on the map, and then we're going we're to head out into the ocean. Now, just up here is a washed-up shark, so I'm going to show you the location on the map here. If you're ever desperate for food, you can always quite easily come up to this point here. And you can see it's just before the uh, rightmost uh, river system here. Now, when you're very small, you can't go very far onto land at all. And uh, you'll find the washed up sharks are really not uh, something that you'll be able to eat from. You can quickly go and grab a piece and get back to the water, um, but you can't stay out of water for long. But once you're a larger size, sub-adult and adult, you can actually get out of the water for a little bit longer. Now, what you're going to notice when I come out of the water and I go towards the shark is your water level is going to drop. Now, at first, it's not going to drop much because you actually stay wet. But as you dry out, the water level drops considerably and you do not want to go too far from the water's edge. You've got to get back to the water quite quickly. So just keep that in mind whenever you do go on land. Um, I'd recommend going on land as little as possible. Uh, but the one great thing about being an adult is you can see how long my neck is now. We can actually reach very far and I'm going to show you a bit of a trick. Now we're actually quite hungry at the moment so we're going to come up here. I'm not going to sprint, I'm just going to go forward. And we're just going to take a bit. We're not going to eat. We're just going to take. Now, as you can see, we're, we're not that far from the water. And if we sprint now... You can see our water level going down very quickly. But as soon as we go back, we're all right. And then we can just um, swallow that piece of meat. Now, you can rinse and repeat that and fill your food levels up. Uh, but of course, the the food you're really going to be looking for is this dinosauries, the fish in the ocean, um, and they they're very easy to catch with this dinosaur. You're you're a very fast swimmer, and there's a lot of fish everywhere. Of course, if you go into the rivers, you find them even more. Uh, but we're just going to do that again. So as you can see, we can as soon as we come up to uh, um, this time, I'm going to eat. I'm just going to show you, but you can see we're quite far away. Now, while our stamina is going up, you'll see um, our water level is going to start going down, but it's not too bad. Once you start moving, you can see it really starts to drain. But as an adult, it's not too much of a worry. Um, but when you're small, uh, you definitely want to focus on uh, eating fish, as you really cannot spend far out of the water at all and can't go very far onto land at all either. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna come uh, gonna come down this way and we're gonna to head towards Red Island. Now we can collect some starfish here in Ocean Stacks. Now Ocean Stacks is quite a large part of the map and it goes all the way along the coast here. Uh, what I usually do, I'm not, I mean obviously I don't really need to quest at this stage. But if I am thinking about doing a quest, I usually will quickly quickly have a look, see if I can find some starfish. And if I can't, then I'll just leave the area and go somewhere else. You know, there's, there's so many areas to quest in, in the ocean, and uh, you'll never be short. Never be short of areas to do easy quests in. Now, the starfish one is pretty good. Generally, the, you only have to get 15 starfish, uh, which is pretty easy. And you usually find them either in on top of rocks or in sandy areas, very similar to places where you find these anemones. So it's quite actually, it's quite odd just to find one lot of starfish by themselves. Um, yeah, there'll probably be some on here as well. Oh, as you can see, the the power in this dinosaur when you get bigger is, is quite good. Oh, there's heaps up here. So it's good with, when you only have to get 15 starfish, Uh, it's really not many at all. And then usually the next... Uh, yeah, that's all on enemies. 
usually the next the next quest would be to get an enemies so could have been the rock we were just on there we go nice and easy so then, yeah, while we're here, we might as well get some anemones, hey? Now, these, like I said, these are very easy, and they're very common. Pretty much every location you go to uh, will have these challenges, and the lake sponge challenge. <laughs> it's quite a fun dinosaur. Uh, at, at first, you... You are a little bit slower, and you lack the power and the reach. Uh, but as soon as you do get that, um, this dino dinosaur becomes a lot of fun. Now you can see down here also another another one you quite often get will be uh, collect the the shellfish and turtle shells, and they're sort of scattered around th around through the area as well. Usually, all of these rocks have an enemies on them. Now just keep in mind, yeah, always keep an eye on your oxygen level. It's quite easy just to pop up and grab some oxygen whenever you need to. Okay, so the, the turtle shell and shellfish I usually don't bother too much with. I go for the easier and quicker quests. Um, but yeah, look, that's up to you. Now you can see when you become adult, your, your jumps are huge. It's uh, really good. Now I'm going to show you another another area on the map here. Now as you come to Red Island here, we head over to the the closest point between the mainland and Red Island. I'm going to show you uh, an item there. Now if you are in Ocean Stacks and you need turtle shells, you can quickly do a quick run over to uh, Red Island here. And as you can see, there's usually uh, this turtle shell right there. Um, there's usually a lot of turtle shells on the coast here. And you can quickly come and grab one and then head back. There's another one there. You can head quickly back to stacks and continue your challenge. Now there's another washed up shark here. Now it's a lot further inland, but if you ever get stuck, you can quickly uh, get on land, grab a piece of... Uh, meat from that washed up shark i'll just show you where we are on the map so right there and uh, that's a great great place to get some food as well so as you can see you can quickly come back to ocean stacks and continue the quest um <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> sometimes i forget how powerful the jump is um, so that is one thing to be careful of <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so as you can see this is not a land land uh, dinosaur at all. Um, and if you th if you think this looks bad, wait till you're a uh, juvenile. <laughs> uh, but as you can see the beauty of being an adult and having the long neck is you can reach onto the shore quite comfortably. And you don't have to put yourself in too much danger. Uh, now our health regen, as you can see, is pretty good. Pretty much goes straight back. So we're just going to head over to uh, my my favourite location to quest. Um, I guess before that, I might actually show you here uh, a couple of our uh, our abilities. So R1 is just a bite. A very simple bite. Let's see if I can show you a little bit better here. So there you go. Um, nothing too special at all. Actually, we'll go to our abilities. So yeah, the head one there is just the bite, which causes medium damage. I've never actually bitten anyone before, so <laughs> I'm not quite sure how well it goes. You actually get no senses, which is quite odd. I think they'll be changing that in the future. Uh, metabolism, I'm just using Fisher. Um, all you really need is to eat meat and fish and you have a moderate food drain. I don't think there's really any need to go uh, into eat 
eating uh, carrion bones, meat, and fish. Um, now, the odd thing is, I've actually found I could eat bones already, so I'm not sure if that's just a uh, something that they're going to fix up or change in the future. Uh, hide, I've gone to increase my speed even more. I think that's the best way to go. I don't think um, resilient scales is necessary at all. Again, I've got uh, increased stamina re regeneration by 30% when in water, which really helps. And I think, because you're swimming the whole time, that's the best option. Uh, now, fall damage is what I just did. <laughs> so if you think you're going to be landing on the land a lot, that's probably the best idea. Uh, beach coma, look, I think that might be okay, but you're really never on land, and there's really no point to it. Uh, back limb. So we've got our two here, and these are the ones that I've been... So lunge is what I've been using, which basically gives you a, a huge lunge in the water, which allows you to jump out of the water um, and escape other dinosaurs or just have a bit of fun, chase other fish. And you've got barrel roll, which actually damages thing in your, things in your path. Now, I think this might be handy in the future when there's other dinosaurs attacking you in the water. Right now, there aren't really any. Um, but I guess you can sort of barrel roll into people. And you can also, uh, it also gets you charging forward. So that's uh, this one here. And then you've got your your lunge one. Just have to wait. That's your one for moving. So yeah, it's pretty good. You've got, you know, you've got a few options to escape danger. Now, you never know, we might bump into a... Uh, Sarko up in this area. This is where I usually find a few of them hanging out. Um, now a lot of dinosaurs cross the water into Red Island in this area so just keep an eye out for them in the water. Now you've got some uh, water creatures here. I, turtles are quite easy to catch and really good uh, really good for upping your food levels. Um, but yeah, there's heaps of, always heaps of food in the ocean. Fish, manta rays, stingrays, uh, sunfish, uh, the trout, kind of, um, trout or salmon? Um, and as well, you've got the washed up sharks, and of course you've got kelp sharks in the ocean itself. So we're just leaving, technically leaving ocean stacks here. Okay, now this is actually my favourite place for questing now. Uh, there's a couple of reasons for this. Number one, well usually when it's daytime you can see it's a very beautiful area. Um, ah, now Azure Shore, I don't, um, I very rarely have ever had to collect rocks here. Hmm, that's quite funny. Okay, so anyway, you've got the collect rock uh, quest, but most of the time you will get lake sponge, uh, collect lake sponge, collect anemones, collect starfish. Uh, they're the three uh, really easy ones. Now one thing I will say is, yeah, just be careful as this location now has become a bit of a favourite spot for sarcos. I think just because, A, it's easy to quest in, you're near Red Island, you're near, the, you're near a home cave, and uh, the oceans are very safe. So if you are at Kaiwekia, just, uh, yeah, just, just be careful in this area for... Uh, uh, Sarko is uh, sneaking up on you <laughs> as they do uh, but yeah in the daytime this area is just beautiful you've got uh, all these little reefy outcrops it's uh, really nice swimming around here um, and there's usually a bit of food around here as well oh, here we go we've got a manta ray if we were so inclined we could catch that as well uh, so yeah this is just a really great area to hang out in and usually I, uh, if I can just bring it up here, I usually use this home cave down the bottom here which isn't far and uh, as soon as you come out of the home cave you've got uh, Azure Shore, sorry I might have called it Azure Reef before, you've got Azure Shore just to quickly go into and do some quick questing for some easy points. Now this is right on the uh, edge of, of the area here, but uh, I'm going to show you we're going to skirt the edge here. So if you if you come along the edge, along here, 
come to the very end. It's quite, it's quite, it's a little bit more difficult here at night seeing everything. Uh, so yeah, I've probably picked the uh, not the best time of day to come here, but in between all these um, reefs, you'll find all the lake sponge. And uh, down along this area, you've got quite a lot of uh, starfish. You can see huge clumps of starfish, which make the starfish qu uh, quest very easy. And if you sort of come straight up and to the left a little bit from the home cave, which is this side, you will find that someone has already come here, of course. So there's more starfish here, heaps more starfish. Uh, you'll find all the anemones. Now you can see, again, um, this area just is really good for questing. There seems to be large amounts of everything sort of grouped together. So um, a lot of the quests are yeah, quite easy to do here. So it's just a nice, enjoyable area. Just trying to... It's actually been a little while since I've been back here. I, th I, I always thought there was some uh, anemones on here. Ah, here we are. So as you can see, I mean, <laughs> we haven't had to go far. And in the daytime, uh, everything really pops. So it's um, very easy to find. Oh, it's got lake sponge next. Okay, well, I'm not going to uh, bother you going through <laughs> all of the lake sponge. But the lake sponge is plentiful here as well. So, uh, you know, don't hesitate to do that quest as well. I'd usually do that and then uh, start. Whoa, here we go. So we've got a uh, little baby, uh, a, a little baby Sarko. <laughs> so yeah, a lot of people are coming out here now to quest. Uh, the river systems are really becoming clogged with all the other dinosaurs, and it's just becoming such a dangerous place. Uh, so you'll find, um, yeah, a lot of Sarkos are coming out to the ocean now. Um, now usually I would uh, ocean. <laughs> open the menu here and have a chat with him but uh, of course we're doing the video here so uh, i'm not going to be doing that so let's uh, scoot on down to the home cave and then i'm going to leave you uh so yeah so the home cave is very easy it's just just down around the corner here basically and then the good thing is yeah when you come out you've got azure shore right there for very easy questing so I highly recommend all of this area of the map. And I, re I do really love this dinosaur. It's It's been a lot of fun and hugely different. Uh, hugely different from all the other dinosaurs. Now, of course, that's sort of sta <laughs> stating the obvious. Um, but the home cave is just down here. Yeah, being a swimmer... Um, you, really, you generally have the oceans to yourself, um, and it's quite safe. You're very fast, so you don't have to worry too much about everyone else. Uh, so here we are, back back to the safety of the home cave. Um, so yeah, I hope uh, I hope you've enjoyed this video and just got a few uh, easy tips. So I'd say just remember when you're young, uh, when you're a juvenile, adolescent, just be careful going onto land I, I would actually try to avoid it as much as possible when you're larger uh, you're a lot safer to go on land and you've got extended reach uh, wait till you get your abilities once you get your abilities you really love this dinosaur uh, when you're smaller uh, it, it can be a little bit of a struggle and you think oh geez this this dinosaur is very sluggish um, but as you go along uh, you really begin to enjoy it. And I think when there's more ocean-going dinosaurs, the oceans are going to come alive a lot more and be a lot more fun. Uh, but thanks for watching this video. Uh, I hope you like my Kaweki. I think it looks pretty awesome. And I'm so happy to have made it to adult size. And I just really wanted to bring a bring a little video to you and, and yeah, show off, uh, show off my adult Kaweki. So thanks for watching. If you've got any questions, just post them below. And I'll be happy to uh, to answer them. I love chatting to everyone out there. So um, thanks for watching, and I'll check. I'll catch you in a video shortly.
Bye for now.